Uh, I've been a food stylist now for 20 years, and the, the, the funny thing with ice cream is that I started out not knowing anything about how to style ice cream. I started scooping it like a, somebody at a, an ice cream shop would do, and developed technique over the years. Um, but I find ice cream a great medium to work with uh, simply because of the challenges it offers. It's, it's kind of like an athlete who prepares, trains for it, knows what he's doing, and then the day of the competition is prepared mentally, knows what the, the obstacles are going to be, and, um, and accomplishes his goal. Anytime I do ice cream, there's a number of variables that uh, have to be considered. One is the kind of ice cream it is, whether it's high fat ice cream or low fat ice cream. High fat ice cream is actually more difficult to work with because the melting point is quicker. It doesn't have as many preservatives or stabilizers in it, so it gets harder than um, cheaper ice cream that has stabilizers. Um, and, but it also melts quicker. So the kind of ice cream is, is the first thing to consider because your temperature of your freezer also changes. You need a warmer or not as cold of a freezer with high fat ice cream as you do. You can have a very cold freezer with cheap ice cream because it won't get super hard because the butter fat content is less. The other thing to consider is how you're doing the ice cream. The reason I use three pound tubs is primarily because it gives me a, a larger surface to scoop. I'm always pulling the scoops rather than just scooping in like they would do at an ice cream parlor. Um, and so instead of having maybe a three inch or four inch area to, to scoop in a, in a quart or a gallon size, a three gallon gives me a much bigger, an eight or a ten inch um, surface, and I can go three or four wide with my scoops instead of just one. Wow. So it gets me more scoops. The ice cream stays colder in a three, three gallon tub, and if I cut that three gallon tub into three pieces, now I have potentially four, twelve different scoops widthwise that I can get out of it. I developed a set of custom scoops, um, those are handmade scoops that I use that have long handles on them and those were developed because uh, when you're styling ice cream you need a lot of leverage and you're usually uh, lower in the freezer and trying to scoop with one hand uh, doesn't give you the leverage that you need so pulling the scoop towards you gives you optimum leverage and having a longer handle also that gives you uh, the ability to put a lot more torque on the, on the scoop which when you're dealing with higher fat ice cream it can be hard to pull so you, you need as much uh, leverage as you can. Dry ice is kind of crucial with doing ice cream for a number of reasons. One is you, you need to be able to control the amount of melt or how the ice cream melts and how firm it gets and just using a freezer uh, does not give you that opportunity. Dry ice is great for a number of reasons. One being that uh, you can put it over the set and that will allow the, uh, the ice cream to stay cold on set which buys you time and any food that is goes perishable quickly you need to be able to control that environment the reason people do real ice cream versus fake ice cream, real ice cream is predominantly used for packaging or for ice cream companies. However, I also think that using real ice cream, um, although sometimes more challenging, gives you a better end result. It looks real, it melts real, even if you add melted ice cream to fake ice cream to give it that melt, it still looks fake. 
everything is going more towards real. Um, the, the days of, of perfect food are out, but one misconception with ice cream or with any food, when you're trying to make it look casual or trying to make it look real, is that you don't have to put as much time into it. It, it actually requires more effort and more time to make it look real and casual and melted just in the right areas, um, having sauce drizzle down right in the right areas so the light hits it perfectly. Timing has to be right on with um, both the stylist and the photographer. There has to be a lot of communication as to what's needed at the studio, uh, what equipment is needed by the stylist, how much product is needed, how it's going to arrive, when it needs to be there. Ice cream, anybody shooting real ice cream should have ice cream at the studio no less than 24 hours before the day of the shoot and put in a freezer that is already uh, down to temperature. Otherwise it doesn't temper properly. You could never bring ice cream in the day of a shoot and expect it to scoop well. But the, uh, the biggest thing that the photographer needs to know is that you're dealing with a food that has a life expectancy um, once it's on set of sometimes seconds. So lighting needs to be dialed in, the sets need to be all tweaked. There isn't a lot of time to be adjusting lighting once you've got Hero on set. I personally like to use real ice cream when doing stand-ins because the difference in color, texture, and everything is completely different with fake than it is with real. And there's nothing more rewarding than working with real ice cream and then seeing a finished shot that looks good and that you've accomplished all your goals and not let the ice cream beat you.